Growing up, my family was poor. I'm not saying that so you feel sorry for me. I'm just telling you so you have context as to why I never played the original Final Fantasy VII. Growing up, all my family could afford at the time was a Nintendo, so there are some experiences that I missed out on. Lucky for me, Square dropped the Final Fantasy VII remake on PS4 back in 2020. I love the remake. It's one of my favorite games of the PS4 era, and it helped me understand why so many gamers love Cloud in the game. This entire time, I was under the impression it was because Final Fantasy VII was this enriched storyline about a group of ragtag friends taking down an evil mega corporation. But no, it was Tifa's tits. I know it doesn't seem like it, but four years have passed since the remake dropped and some major changes were made to the storyline of the remake. So naturally, you and I have been on the edge of our seats waiting to see what happens in the next installment and I'm here to break it all down for you. Before we get into it, a quick disclaimer. The following video is not a full review. I have not completed the game at the time of this recording, so this simply contains some first impressions and general info on the game. How I feel at this moment could change by the time I reach the end of the game. So feel free to take everything I say with a grain of salt. Now with that disclaimer out of the way, here's everything you need to know before you install Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the second entry in the line of the Final Fantasy VII remakes. Think of this game as like it's disc two. It's out now exclusively for the PS5, but I'd imagine it's coming to PC at some point seeing as the last game is on PC as well. Rebirth takes place immediately, and I mean immediately after the events of the Final Fantasy VII remake. So if you were wondering, yes, you need to play the last game to understand what's going on in this game, or at least watch a summary on YouTube, especially considering changes were made to the original story. Storyline. Cloud and the gang are back and they're trying to figure out what type of time Sephiroth is on and the process that leads them down another giant rabbit hole. A hole full of interesting dialogue, crazy battles, and a whole lot of exploration. The first major change you're going to notice in comparison to the last game is this is a full-blown open world game. The last game had exploration, but it wasn't on the level of rebirth. There are several biomes you're given access to throughout the game and each has its own mysteries that you have to unravel through exploring the map. I found the exploration to be fun and this is because early on you're given access to a chocobo to ride. Once you get that big ass chicken, the game's flow speeds up significantly. Not to mention there are towers sprinkled throughout the world that when accessed, they give you access to fast travel. My one knock on the travel is sometimes navigating the map can be difficult because of the mountainous terrain. So sometimes it felt like they were just trying to pad the game by making it difficult to find your next objective. The good news is, is that these towers also mark on your map all the nearby side quests for you to complete. So essentially Square developers have been playing a lot of Ubisoft games because this play from them is ripped straight out of Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Watch Dogs, and every other modern Ubisoft games. The difference is there isn't as much shit on the screen and there ain't microtransactions. I heard that's what you need to be considered a true quadruple A experience. I'm sorry, that was me. Combat wise, several things have been updated. The game implements a ton of new animations, but more importantly, several new systems. First, you have the synergy system. It's similar to limit breaks, but it's strictly for the team. During combat, a gauge will charge up for all the positive actions that you make in combat. And after a certain point, you can unleash a powerful combo attack with one of your teammates. Well, actually, the Synergy System was first introduced in Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. It was a DLC add-on to the original remake that contained several major improvements. It also included some story DLC involving my sweet, sweet, beloved Yuffie. Oh my God, that woman is so kind and just beautiful, poised and brave. Yeah, and 16. Huh, what? I didn't stutter, I said she's 16. And to be honest, the fact that you're in love with her, that's pretty weird. Matter of fact, uh, do me a favor and turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do that? Anyways, the new synergy attacks are cool and they fit right in with the rest of combat. As for the rest of the combat, you will feel right at home. This is an action game that at first glance, it seems like a button masher, but there is an ebb and flow to things that rewards the player for slowing down. Once you understand the flow to combat and you master switching between the different party members, combat is just a lot of fun. I also love the new material and the summons that you can get in the game. But one thing I will say I wish they cleaned up is this game's parry system. I can pull a parry off, but it's kind of janky because the blocking animation doesn't feel fluid. Rebirth also contains a bunch of new mini games. This includes a new card game called Queen's Blood and a ton of other stuff. The mini games have been a topic of conversation online. People either tend to love or hate them, but I don't have a strong opinion on them at the moment seeing as I'm only 10 hours in and I've only done a couple of them, which they didn't bother me too much. All I can say is that the two that I've encountered so far didn't bother me too much seeing as they were both side quests. For my research, some of the mini games are tied to the main campaign and that's where things can get annoying, but I can't speak on that at the moment. That's just hearsay. What I can tell you 
is that if you love a rich RPG, this game is right up your alley. And that's because there are new RPG elements this time around, and I'm sure a lot of you are gonna enjoy them. The first of which is that you can now romance some of your party members. This personally did nothing for me, but I know some of you out there got a sticky Tifa or Air of Body pillow, so you're really gonna enjoy this feature. Me personally, I just like the fact that I can flirt with multiple people and cause chaos in the workplace. For the love of where the hell have you two been? On a date. Kind of. Oh, yo, what the fuck, bitch? I'm gonna dump her. I ain't even posted her on my story yet and she claiming me. Instead of a traditional skill tree, this game opts for what they're calling a folio system. It's a grid-like system similar to the one you can find in Final Fantasy X. Each character has their own separate folio and you'll need to use skill points to unlock skill cores within them. Skill cores are locked behind weapons and party level. The three types of skill cores include stat boost, abilities, and synergy abilities. If this all sounds like some type of fancy remix of a traditional skill tree, in my opinion, that's because it is. They're just changing stuff to change it. But it's really not that hard to grasp this system. I will say there are little quality of life improvements I like in Rebirth, like being able to save multiple team setups. This helps seeing as you will have more people in your party with the addition of being able to control Red X and some other people that you'll meet along the way. The photo mode's been improved and overall the visuals do look better. If you run the game in quality mode. Rebirth offers a performance mode, which is how I've been running it, and it's been drawing some negative feedback online. First off, I'd like to say the performance is good. I've had no issues. The game runs buttery smooth at 60 FPS, but I've seen a lot of people say that it's blurry and it's just flat out ugly in this mode. I disagree with that sentiment. It doesn't look as good, but player models look fine to me. I will say the textures in the environment, especially the draw distance, does take a hit when you run performance mode, but the game is more than playable. That being said, I have to ask people, what did you expect. That's the trade-off for a higher frame rate on console. If you want the best visuals and the best frame rate, you're gonna have to wait for that PC version of the game. Overall, I'll just say don't expect some giant leap in gameplay. This is an Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 2, but more of a refinement of the Final Fantasy 7 remake. As I said earlier, think of this game as disc 2 to the adventure. I'm more so playing this title to see how the story turns out and what changes were made seeing as I didn't grow up with this game. As for the negatives, I weaved in a few earlier into the conversation, but just in case you weren't listening, I brought up the game's janky parry system, the inconsistent visuals and performance mode, and navigation being a bit difficult at times. Some other things I wasn't a fan of include the opening section. After the game detects your save file from the demo, I had to replay a certain portion of the demo before being able to skip the rest. The pacing was also slow the first couple hours. When you first get into the open world, things pick up, but I won't lie, that opening section felt a little Final Fantasy 16 for me. The AI is dumb as rocks too. Don't expect them to help. You have to manage all three party members at all times in a fight or the game can become very difficult. I think the tutorials in this game aren't the best either. It's been multiple times where I've had to pause the game and ask myself, what the fuck are they talking about? Only to realize later the way they explain things isn't streamlined or intuitive. The card game being a prime example. It's really simple, but the way it's explained to you, you would have thought you was playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Basically, just be prepared to learn some things through trial and error. Another issue I see with this game is the camera. It still hasn't been improved. For the most part, it's okay on ground level, but when the fight takes to the sky, it is horrible. The camera tends to either spaz all over the place or you just can't see enemies leaving you wide open for an attack. It's stuff like that where the game starts to feel artificially difficult because the developers didn't put more love and care into the small details. All that being said, I am enjoying the game for what it is. I will say though, just don't go into this game expecting some mind blowing new experience. This is a continuation of the last game and as long as you're okay with that, you're gonna have a good time. So do what you want with that information. And while you figure out what you wanna do with that info, allow me to turn your attention to the community. I asked you, the viewer, what were some of your questions you had about FF7 Rebirth on Twitter in the community tab, and I took the ones I was capable of answering, so here we go. Grandmaster Biz asked, should I replay Final Fantasy 7 Remake or just watch a recap on YouTube? I also wanted to try the intermission DLC, but I don't know if it's worth the re-download. I will say you don't need to replay the remake, but if you already played it, maybe just watch the summary to kind of refresh your memory, especially because I'm not gonna lie, where this game takes off Rebirth, it literally starts where the last game ends. Ended. So if you don't remember at bare minimum the ending, it might be a little bit confusing, but I, I don't think you need to replay the whole game. Just if you've already played it, play a summary on YouTube to refresh your memory. If you've never played the remake, for those of you who've never played it, I think you should play that before you play this game. Ahmad asked, with Final Fantasy VII Remake taking 40 hours to beat and Rebirth taking 65, is it worth picking up the remake series? And to that, I say, it depends. Do you enjoy the gameplay loop? Do you think you're gonna enjoy the new open world? Cause that's like the main new feature. I do feel like there's enough in the open world that it felt fun to explore. You're constantly running into NPCs or caves with interesting items and new things to unlock and just all different types of cool side quests and stuff like that. So you have to ask yourself, is that open world a 
big enough factor for you to feel excited about it because it really comes down to every game is repetitive it really comes down to whether or not you enjoy the gameplay loop so i say watch some gameplay on youtube or twitch and then ask yourself is that gameplay loop something i'm into if so go for it blue gamer cast as does final fantasy 7 rebirth get repetitive and the answer to that question is kind of in line with the last one every game is repetitive go on youtube go on twitch somewhere twitter look at some gameplay and ask yourself is the gameplay loop something i'm into if you enjoyed the last final fantasy 7 remake you're most likely going to enjoy this one if you didn't this game might not be for you soul child more asks do items you get from final fantasy 7 remake and the rebirth demo carry over to the main game the stuff that you got from the rebirth demo it does carry over matter of fact soon as you boot up rebirth when it'll go into your cloud and it'll load the save and then a, a thing will pop up like a screen will pop up and it'll tell you what you unlocked i had some people tell me when i was streaming the game like right when i booted up like oh make sure you don't delete your demo or you're not going to be able to get the items that you unlocked from the demo in rebirth but that's not true if you deleted the demo off your hard drive it's okay because i don't know if you guys know there's this thing called the cloud and your saves are in it so yeah things certain things do carry over not everything but some things do big dog t asks how open is the world in comparison to the last game and i would say rebirth is like night and day comparison to the original remake the original remake was kind of more so semi-open world it was a little bit more linear it was kind of hard to get lost but there was just enough like corners and crevices that you could explore and find some stuff this when you get to the open world you can make a massive left you can make a massive right you can go massively down south north it's a true open world game but there are like multiple it's there's several multiple like areas basically that are just big as shit it's a big game it is i, I would say it's a full-blown open world game so mentally prepare yourself and if you don't like open world games this one might not be for you but with that being said rebirth isn't the only thing with a major open world my channel is like a huge open world full of content worth exploring and since you made it this far do me a favor and click the card you see on the screen right now i got some early hands-on time with dragon's dogma 2 and i've got some interesting thoughts about that game so if final fantasy 7 isn't your cup of tea when it comes to rpgs maybe dragon's dogma 2 is and you can find out by clicking the card on the screen